everybody and welcome to another episode of Renzi's Ultimate Decades Challenge. It is currently the year 1327. Last episode was very fun and chaotic. George and Melissa finally got married. It, it's only been about one sim day since then so no updates on pregnancy just yet. After George had a nice talk with Philip he finally came to agreement and allowed him to marry Melissa and it was a very sweet moment. And a lot of the episode did revolve around that. We added to the farm a bit and as far as the royals go, Joan managed to negotiate with Laurent and Laurent said okay. He was willing to sign a peace treaty if Cassian would pay homage to him for Glimmerbrook and given that he's falling out of favor among the nobles, Cassian really had no choice but to agree to that peace treaty but instead of going himself, he went ahead and sent Gavin in his stead, after which Joan declared that she would not be returning to Winnenberg, and now Cassian is left without his queen and without his heir. So what happens next? Uh, we will see. We are back at the Rawl farm. Spring has sprung. Spring is springing. Well, it's still winter. It's, it's, it's only been like a sim day. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. George, please move. It's only been a sim day since they got married but i was looking here and i was like who the hell died and freaking philip and jaquetta died all i did was age them up into elders and they immediately just kicked the bucket literally one same day after and now i'm wondering where the hell brian is wait because he's just a child medieval market town i think that's the tavern is he living at the tavern okay i, I need to see where the kids are Oh, that's very sweet. Okay, I, I need to figure out what's going on here because <laughs> um, I am just uh, thrown for a loop here. So yeah, I, I aged them up into, it looks like Jaquetta was an educator. But yeah, let's uh, let's see what happened to the kids. Oh my God. Brian and Lonnie were adopted by, I forgot his name already, uh, the royal advisor and his wife who, I, I remember I placed them in the save file as soon as I created it and they never had children autonomously. So they adopted the Fletcher's kids. Uh, yeah, they live over here. And yeah, they have Lonnie and Brian, the Beauforts. That's what they're called. I forgot. Uh, and they have a dog named Orchata. <laughs> Okay, um, okay, I need some time to figure that storyline. Maybe, I don't know. I, I don't know. Because technically it's been like three months since the wedding, I guess. Perhaps Philip and Jaquetta worked for the Beauforts or something. And after they passed away, they went ahead and adopted the kids. I don't know. I was uh, unable to delete Lonnie. So I guess Lonnie lives on. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that happened. Let's go back to the farm. I actually, I, I still haven't aged up little Joffrey. So I'll go ahead and do that now. I hope he's blonde. I really do. That'll just take some drama off my shoulders. <laughs> Esther is on her way. She still has a pretty good relationship with Cassian, but her romance and friendship with Joffrey have just skyrocketed, even though he didn't want that kid. <laughs> There's so many babies. Oh my god, little Joffrey's blonde. Okay. And he's wiggly. Another wiggly baby. Okay, so this seals the deal. Jo Joffrey knows this child is his because there is not a single blonde in either Esther or Cassian's family. So I think uh, he's uh, breathing a sigh of relief that this is indeed his heir. All right, so here is the little lord and he is a spellcaster. <laughs> So the spellcaster genes are spreading and little Tobias is very happy about his new sibling and Philip is feeling fine. He wants to see his mama. Arya wants to become friends with Josephine. No, don't do it. She wants to look at the bright side. Oh, so I think she's, um, she must be sad that her brother's gone. So she wants to look at the bright side there and be like well at least you know we're being treated okay i feel like cassian definitely doesn't visit his children or anything so she misses her mom her dad has never been close to her i still i don't think he is yeah their their relationship isn't even like halfway so yeah poor aria but uh i'll leave them here okay so let me have margaret come harvest everything because 
we're one day away from spring, I believe. Two days. Two days away from spring. And we'll have uh, everyone come take care of the farm. Let's have Melissa come help. Come clean poor little Bluebell and milk her. Little James, why don't you go ahead and scatter some food for the chickadees. And... There's some bread roll stew that Matilda made. She's sad about the Fledgers passing. Melissa, come eat. Oh, we've got a visitor. This was, um, I don't know where she came from, but this is Olive Benner. She's actually uh, one of the gallery sims that I introduced as a marriage prospect for George. I'm not sure why she's here. Uh, I've still kept her in the neighborhood. Melissa, let's make an, uh, uh, another little redheaded friend she's probably just in the neighborhood i'm not sure why my first impressions mod isn't working i've like installed it i'm not sure i am not sure james is just playing a nice little tune here like the olden days but it's getting a little late oh my god james has three hatchables we already have so many chickens though um i'm just gonna sell them George, repair this, please. Matilda's so sad. I'm sorry you lost a friend. Why don't you just go to sleep? James, you can go to sleep too. It's getting a little late. Kids, everyone, just go to bed. And with that, uh, I think we are at the very end of 1327. <gasps> Melissa is pregnant, guys. Oh my god. We've got the first third gen child on the way i'm so excited we haven't had a baby in the house in a while oh she's got to tell everyone when she wakes up matilda is awake why are you just drinking the milk matilda sure you know what we can do let's make some ingredients let's salt some meat oh we don't have a whole lot do we uh i think we have some okay we can we can cut some meat here Okay, so with that, I think now we can make um, a good amount of salted meat. Uh, James with the high blood pressure. He's thinking about Elric. Stargaze with George. That's so cute. Okay, why don't you use the potty? And uh, just make sure the animals are fed and stuff. Okay, we've got some salted meat. So now... Do I have to pick up servings to... Because I believe with the Yield Cookbook mod, you have to pick up servings in order to have the ingredients. And I learned that the hard way because I remember making so much flour and wondering why I didn't have any. So from there, I should be able... Yes, I can make the cheese, meat, and bread. So we'll have that. And then maybe she can make some legit breakfast. We can make some onion soup for the household. <gasps> Melissa's awake. George isn't awake yet. You know what? Maybe Melissa wants to help with breakfast. The if I go here, it gives me the option, these options for first impressions, but I don't know what the first impression is. Like it doesn't it doesn't show up here. What happens if I regenerate? uh regenerate first impressions then will it show up no it doesn't i'm not sure this, i used to be able to use this mod no problem so i'm not sure it's probably something i'm doing okay melissa you're very hungry you're also you also need to pee why don't you just grab some of this i'm so happy that they're married uh. okay james why don't you why don't you pet the cow enthusiastically uh, okay the roosters are roosting roosterin i know that's not a word i think they already ate but let's scatter some more and poor teddy poor teddy is so dirty let's clean him let's shear him uh and let's milk bluebell okay everyone's waking up where's the onion soup hold on oh it's there oh my god with all this clutter, I don't know where anything is. <laughs> okay. Matilda, come grab some breakfast. George, come grab some breakfast. Because Melissa has some news for you guys. We're very excited. I don't think there's a way to, like, announce it in a group. 
So let's go ahead. Let's share the big news. Aw, she's happy she made that new friend. <gasps> okay, there you go. Share big news. Let's tell let's tell George. We're expecting a little Rolf. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, maybe he's just nervous. Um pregnancy the, from concept of parenthood george's partner announced being pregnant it hits george now how young he still is how little he wants anything major and life-changing happening at this point how little he feels ready to handle such a thing impossible not okay you'll you'll get over it you'll be fine it'll be fine you have such a big support system melissa's pretty happy about the baby okay let's go tell granny oh my god she wants to woohoo in a bush those hormones. Okay, maybe Matilda will take this a little better. <gasps> oh my god, oh my god, Matilda's so happy. Let's tell Grandpa. Okay, let's share the big news with Gramps. You're gonna be a Grandpa. <gasps> and James is like, oh my goodness, yeah, that's my boy. <laughs> Oh, Margaret, come weed your flowers. It's a Saturday. Let's have James craft some stuff. Oh, that's right. James can craft a bee box. We can have that. Well, I'm scared with John being allergic to freaking bees. Okay, let's do some sculptures. Maybe he makes something for the baby. Hold on. Just like he did for little Emmeline. I'm just here pretending that death rolls aren't a thing right now. I <laughs> Okay, he's going to make the baby a little dragon. Oh, Melissa and Margaret just became good friends. We're just having wholesome times all around here. George, why don't you go play some archery? You haven't done that in a while. And it's still too cold to plant stuff, but that's fine. We'll just prepare. Uh, let's get some mushrooms and some watermelon. Well, it looks like Melissa wants to paint. So maybe that's her thing. Maybe she likes to paint. I was considering that perhaps. I was kind of wondering what like Melissa's hobby might be. Oh gosh. Oh god. Oh god. She's puking. Oh gosh. Okay. Oh Melissa. I'm sorry. And yeah, she needs some fun. Why don't you just have a quick woohoo sesh with your wife? But I was watching Cosmic Hippie's Ultimate Decades Challenge. She has a really nice one. It's fairly new. And she has the family um, making mead and selling that. And I also have the, the home business mod, I think. So I actually had that brazen cheese making skill. So maybe she becomes a cheesemonger. I don't know. We also have the vinegar distilling thing here. Uh, I know technically around this time, I think monks made cheese. But, you know, just for the sake of having a hobby. And I really want to try that cheese making skill. I remember I did try to have Lavinia make mead. But it's kind of harder to focus on the side households and stuff. So we'll see. Okay, little James. Look at him. He's at level five with the violin. Very cool. But uh, I was going to make it so that Beatrice uh, wants to send. What just happened? Who are you arguing with? Uh, Beatrice sends like a carriage or something to because maybe the Earl wants Margaret to come over and see their home and Margaret's like oh no so let's have her do that I'm just gonna have it be Beatrice and Margaret and I know Beatrice is quite old she's probably like in her 50s or 60s that's about how old I believe Jaquetta and Philip were at this point I feel like she's surviving out of spite but I do plan on having her pass away after Margaret finally gets married so let us go travel with grandmama there's Emmanuel the duke I gave <laughs> he grew out some facial hair but I changed his hair a bit um he's looking quite handsome I I can't he looks so much like Florian so maybe they just look like their mother because I don't see Dargor in him and it's not like Dargor was unattractive but whatever let's go okay so the Gilmores live over here in a lovely home. Okay, so we have made it to the Gilmore household. This is just a, a home, a very nice home that I found on the gallery. I didn't 
change it up much, just a few things here and there. Margaret is here in another lovely dress given to her by her grandmother, as well as a nice necklace so that she looked fresh and ready to go. Also, this hair came with this super pretty flower thingy here. Uh, so they've already said their hellos. Uh, she hasn't seen Leo yet, but Beatrice went inside to talk to them. And Margaret's kind of just like out here looking at this beautiful garden, just completely entranced. Beatrice is in here talking to the Earl. The Countess is is here and they've set up a nice dinner. Margaret's just out here enjoying the view and here comes Leo. She's formally said hello to his parent. It looks very magical. I'm not sure. I think that's, I'm not sure what is doing that, but it actually looks so pretty. He's going to watch a funny video. No, don't watch a funny video, uh, but say hello. Oh goodness. Okay, let's uh, he, let's say he came up and just uh told a joke. But you know, he's probably like <laughs> I don't know, some kind of like cute statement about her being out here and they are they're getting along. I guess they he has learned that she is adventurous. Oh my god, there's Princess Arya back there just marching about. Uh but it looks like he's actually being pleasant with her he's complaining about something and he does think that margaret is attractive but it looks like he actually came out to have a pretty pleasant conversation with her and margaret's trying to be civil i think she's still kind of salty but she likes romance enthusiasts <laughs> okay i guess he's uh flirting with her is he is he flirting with her maybe i i feel like he is rakish uh, likes idealists so she's learned that he's an idealist, I guess. The way I picture it is like he sees her out here admiring the view and he's, he actually lets her know, you know, I, this is actually my garden, which is something that I try to relay the, you know, when I met you, uh, since you seem to think I'm not into nature. And she's like, wait, what do you mean? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I guess we didn't, get off to a good start and she's like yeah no kidding you were oh no not the push-ups oh my god you make my day so much better thank you for making me guys okay all right so uh i i feel like um he might be the kind of guy who's into like sciencey stuff and he 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 might not be into plants the same way that margaret is in that she loves like herbalism gardening and like beautiful flowers and bugs but i feel like he does like love examining plants in like a scientific way more like botany versus a florist for example wait reveal crush I saw a thing that said, does she have a crush on him? They have amazing compatibility. Okay. She thinks he looks basic, but okay. They talked for two seconds. They got to know each other for two seconds and uh, discovered some compatibility there. So I think Margaret's just kind of pleasantly surprised. But before they can talk more, I'm actually going to have the countess call everyone to a meal so everyone countess why are you going over there can you why are you all oh my gosh you guys no one is sitting at the actual table everyone please come take your seats okay so they've uh taken on some interesting assigned seating and margaret is actually smiling at leo and it looks like she's uh, gonna keep talking to him striking up conversation and i feel like beatrice is gonna take this moment to be like some time ago i discovered that the young lord was has an interest in like botany or something and my granddaughter here i learned that she also has an interest in like plants and stuff so that is why uh i thought this might be a good match so i feel like uh despite okay beatrice and the earl are very very good friends now okay um 
so I guess uh, the Earl, maybe he really appreciates the match because he likes Margaret for his son. He's like, oh, she is a lovely young lady, albeit a bit odd. I don't think he would say that out loud, but you know, she she's definitely, I think she definitely gives the air of marching to the beat of her own drum. And Margaret, please sit. Sit down, you're making me nervous. So, yeah, basically, I feel like, you know, Beatrice in her old age, being so distant from both her children, except Emmanuel, I think. I think she has a good relationship with Emmanuel. It's okay. Uh, but I, I feel as though it's kind of like that conversation that George had with Philip. He's like, you know, uh, you don't want to be on your deathbed and have your kids resenting you over all the all the stuff that doesn't matter. So I feel like Beatrice in her old age kind of realized I'm going to die with no one at my side. And I think she genuinely did want to turn a new leaf. So in rekindling her relationship with her daughter and meeting Margaret and knowing that Leo shared the same interests. I feel like she actually uh, brought them together in that way and also staged it in a way to be like, and I feel like there's also obviously interest in the status with the impending war and stuff, but this match does serve her interests, but I feel like she also did it because she knew they shared interests and i feel like margaret is pleasantly surprised uh she and leo uh in just a short amount of time have become really good friends there's no romance or anything just yet but i think th the i think it's opened the possibility of developing something there so it's pretty late uh i'm gonna have Beatrice and Margaret go home and we'll 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 leave that update there for the upcoming wedding. It looks like he's goofing around with the Earl and Margaret. That's adorable. Okay. So uh yeah, I guess the Earl is a goofy guy. The Countess is actually I think she's pretty serious. Um oh she's grumpy. Uh but I feel like maybe the Earl is goofy and has a good relationship with his son, and so like seeing that Margaret has this like funny personality, they're able to be goofy with her, which is so sweet. But let's have them go home. So Margaret is gonna come and hug her mother because she spent a lot of time kind of resenting the arrangement. But she's like, listen, we are actually getting along fairly well and I think this is a d good decision. And I think she also let her parents know, um, I know, I think I always knew deep down that you did this uh, because you were worried about me. So thank you. And so she and her mother are okay. And I think um, with all the ways that this could have gone wrong, Matilda is happy that Margaret is happy. And I think that's all she could want from her kid for her kids. Like she knows that an arranged marriage um, is a dicey situation, but she's glad that it can work out for the better in this case. But it's night. We're about to head into the year 1328. And we've got a couple of birthday rolls. Okay, so we're officially in the year 1328, and it is Arya's turn to age up. Since I do consider the royal family kind of like a main household, I am going to roll for her. So let's see if she makes it to teenhood. No! Oh, no! Oh, gosh, no! Oh, my God! We were, there was just, we were too lucky. We were too lucky. Oh, my God. Not Arya, not another one of Joan's babies. I regret it. I regret it. I should have given all her kids plot armor. But this is also making it spicier, huh? Um, how would she have died? Oh my god, freezing to death in the cold uh, at the end of winter. Jeez, okay. Uh, I hate this. I hate this so much. Oh my god, not Arya, not Arya. After her brother has left. Oh my god. Okay, you know what? No, I'm not gonna do it, guys. I'm not gonna do it. 
I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to freaking do it. <laughs> I know what I said. And I'm going to go back on what I said. I'm going to give all of Joan's kids plot armor. She's already lost too many. Okay. Arya's going to age up. I don't care. You know what? I'm going to say that Arya did freeze to death. And... Oh my god, look at her. She's so concentrated. However... Esther used her potion making abilities to bring her back. Okay. So yeah. So uh, Arya almost died and Esther brought her back to life. That would explain her desire to become friends with Esther. I know it was like kind of like a previous thing, but perhaps this situation it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean it, it happened at this moment maybe it happened some time while she was living here so her desire to be closer to esther was probably a result of her saving her life okay there i'm not gonna do it guys i'm not gonna kill her i can't do it i can't we're gonna age her up we're gonna do it i have no regrets okay she's an art lover oh joan sent her a gift Oh, goodness. Let's say she loves to paint. Okay. All right, let's see how she looks. Okay, there's our princess. Is she so beautiful? And she looks so much like her mother. Oh, my gosh. Like, she has Joan's facial structure. Cassian's hair and eyes. But the spitting image of her mama. And I was actually... First of all, look at her formal look. Holy crap. But uh, when I was doing her party look, I gave her the same hair that Alice had in my machinima. And she actually looks a lot like Alice with this hair. So uh, especially since she has the same shade of uh, the same um, hair color as Alice. And I feel like uh, that's going to trigger Josephine somehow. <laughs> So, you know what? We'll leave it at that. She is absolutely radiant and I have no regrets in uh, keeping her alive. And I f I'm, I'm kind of scared that that's uh, going to come and bite me in the butt for when I actually do death rolls for my other sims. Which brings me to um, I must go age up Cirilla. <laughs> okay, little Cirilla. Dice don't let me down. Okay. Cirilla's okay. She is a-okay and we have another big kid. No more babas. No more babas. Let's go Cirilla. Elric's babies are okay so far. I hope they stay okay. Let's go. Siri is a serious little girl. Let's make her a mental kid. And you know what? The twins age up the next sim day. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to roll. I can't sit here and let the anticipation kill me, uh, but I'm going to just age them up right away if if they make it through this. <laughs> okay, so Cat. Oh, Cat is okay. Gregory. Oh God, they're okay. They're okay. Woo I'm just going to age them up right now, guys. Plus, I have to know what they look like for real, for real. Okay. No, cat. She's about to go make a mess. She is just full of mischief. Okay, go. That way I can just give them all makeovers at once. Okay, cat. She's unforgiving and sincere. All right. Uh, uh, let's just do the aspiration wheel. Unforgiving. That is something, huh? That sure is something. Okay. What is her aspiration? We've got another joke star. She wants to be just like big sis Talia. We're about to see if uh, Emma has a mini me for real, for real though. Oh my God, she wants to become enemies with Harwin? Cat? Is Cat the true villain of the story is my question. Gregory, our haunted boy. He is a genius. We have so many geniuses. Best-selling author. I I'm just gonna pick a random one, guys. I don't care. Let's just give him a teen aspiration. Live fast because he's so haunted. Okay, let's do this. Okay, here's Cirilla. She is so precious, so darling, absolutely stunning. And 
here is Catherine. She does look a lot like her mother. I will say that, that there's something kind of softer about her features. I'm not sure what it is. She definitely has Emma's facial structure, but there's just something very different. And she even has a different shade of blonde because when I went to go put Emma's hair on her, it didn't like automatically give her the correct shade of blonde. So I believe that was it. So it she does look so much like Emma, especially her side profile but there's just something different she has a very sad face but she does look very much like her mother absolutely beautiful of course and finally we've got our broody boy who had his little brush with death so he's got the the gray uh hair here he i want to say he has a the wheeled nose because that is not a rolf nose but i can't pinpoint who he looks like i i gave him leoric skin overlay which is this one i'm not sure who he looks like the most obviously like there's something there where he looks like his parents but i just there's something that i don't see like i can't even say that he looks like elric that much or anything he's definitely a blend of like a bunch a bunch of family members i think uh, I'm not sure, but he's got the eye bags. Boy looks haunted. He looks like he's seen some shit. <laughs> and he's tall. He aged up very tall. So I already... Oh, shoot. I have to roll to see if they get married. If if he does, I, I already know who I want to set him up with, actually. But yeah, so let's roll... Let's roll for marriage for these two. So we want a four and up for them to get married. Uh, So cat... Okay, Kat can get married, and Gregory. Okay, so they will be able to get married. So now for babies, we want two and up. So Catherine... Catherine is not going to have any children. Maybe she's infertile. Okay, so Gregory. Gregory gets six tries. So Kat isn't going to have any kids. She can get married, and Greg can't get married and he has six baby tries Alrighty then okay so here i have all the siblings of the wheeled household and i think i'm gonna leave it here i have been recording way longer than i thought i got too caught up and too excited but that is fine we had a lot of fun a lot of stuff happen margaret is warming up to the idea of marriage she and leo haven't gotten romantic but they really like each other uh, we'll catch up with the royals next episode and we had a lot of birthdays and esther bringing our back to life might be something storyline related because now I've got the gears going. Um, <laughs> and of course, uh, we've got the twins aging up as well as little Siri. So Elric and Miriam's babies are doing okay. Uh, next episode, uh, aside from checking in with the royals, we'll probably get Margaret married. I'll probably do a little more with Talia and Pierre. Melissa will probably have her baby by then and hopefully all is well there. So yeah, we still got a lot of stuff going as we approach the end of the decade, which I feel like has just gone by so fast this time around. But uh, thank you guys so much as usual and I hope you have a great day. Bye!